Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Joost Appelboom and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you don't want to miss out on the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel now. Today's video is made by Katie, who is also known as GadgetStop321. We had several requests for a Top 3 Pens from Katie, so we decided to ask her and we are really glad she accepted it. Katie is on Instagram, but she is best known for her YouTube channel GadgetStop321, where she reviews, well, gadgets, but also a lot of fountain pens and inks. In this video, she is going to share with us which three pens are the favorites in her collection. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Kathy from GadgetStop321 and in today's video, Applebaum has asked me to share some thoughts on my top three fountain pens. Now, when I first started my YouTube channel, I was interested in electronic devices that had an incorporated stylus. I used a Palm Pilot when I first started teaching. When the Galaxy Note came out, I started using that as my phone. And anytime I was shopping for a tablet or a computer, I always looked for a model that had an integrated stylus as an input device. But for some reason, back in 2015, I decided I wanted to start keeping a paper journal. And so when I was looking for a nice journal that had good paper, I kept coming across fountain pen videos. And I discovered that fountain pens weren't just some novelty gift, they were very much alive and thriving as a modern day writing instrument. And that reminded me of stories my dad used to tell about using fountain pens in grade school. And so I went straight over to my mom and dad's house and asked my dad if he had any fountain pens that I could try out and see if it was something that I might be interested in. So he gave me a few. These were pens that he used in high school and shortly after high school. So. They still had ink cartridges in them from the last time he had used them, which was probably about 50 years ago. So I brought them home, disassembled them as much as I could, and started cleaning them up. I learned a lot during that process of taking the pens apart and putting them back together. I learned about the different parts of a fountain pen and how they work together, and I enjoyed that. When I got them inked up and started writing with them, I discovered, yes, I, I like this writing experience. So I probably would have been content with these pens, but I continued to watch YouTube videos and there was a little pocket pen that caught my eye. The Caveco Sport was such a unique and unusual little pen. It was so simple, so practical, I had to pick one up. I started carrying it to school and I bought some of those little bottles of Orochizuku inks and some fun colors and I discovered that I was looking forward to grading papers and really any opportunity to use my fountain pen. I have fond memories of this little pen because it made my job a little more enjoyable. But I discovered after I retired I just wasn't using my little Quebeco Sport much anymore and it was a time in history where we weren't able to get out and about anymore so I didn't have much of a need for a pocket pen but I still like the writing experience of the Caveco Sport. I started looking at AL Sports and I just like them all. They, they're all such pretty finishes and I just couldn't decide which one I wanted and I mentioned that to a fellow YouTuber and his suggestion was just buy them all. That was very tempting, but in the meantime, Caveco came out with a new finish. When I saw the Caveco AL Sport Golden Espresso, I knew this was the model for me. I love drinking coffee. I enjoy it very much. I love the color of this model. I like the matte finish on it and it kind of excited me about the Caveco Sport again. Another thing that I really like about the Caveco pens are you can buy replacement nibs. I was having a tough time deciding which nib I wanted to buy, but then I remembered, hey, whatever nib size I get, if I don't like it, I can get a replacement nib. I got the medium nib and I like it, 
but I also got a 14 karat fine nib, which is very nice. And shortly after that, I picked up a double broad steel nib, which was the first broad nib in my collection, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. So my little Conveco sport is kind of like an entire pin collection in one pin. And I really like that about the Caveco Sport. So it's one of the top three pins in my collection. As I acquired more pins, I discovered that I really liked Pilot's nibs. And another pin that caught my eye was the Pilot Pereira. Now, I already had a Pilot E95S, and it is, it's the most beautiful pin in my collection. But I was reluctant to take that pin to school. I didn't want to take it anywhere that I could risk dropping it or misplacing it, so I would use it around the house or use it when I went to a meeting, but I never really did take it to work. However, I did like the fine nib on it. I loved the way it wrote, so I got a Pilot Prera with a fine nib, and when I wrote with it for the first time, I was shocked at how fine of a line it put down on the paper, how uniform it wrote, and how smooth it was. It wrote an even finer line than my E95S, which I've learned since then tend to put down a broader line. So I was shocked. It was magical how a nib this fine could write so smooth. And this quickly became one of my favorite pens. So at that time, the Caveco Sport and the Pilot Prera were going to school with me nearly every day. The Caveco Sport was the one that I inked up with fun colors and I would use it for grading papers, and the Prera I would usually ink it up with a more serious ink. And sometime later, it was the end of the, a school year, and I was given a bonus from my school for having perfect attendance that year, and I thought, I'm going to treat myself with a pen. And I came across a good deal on a Pilot Custom 74. I knew that I loved the way Pilot Pens wrote, and I had always heard good things about the Pilot Custom 74. And when it arrived, and I inked it up and put the nib to paper for the first time, again, I was shocked at how it wrote. This time, I was surprised at how soft the nib was. I didn't buy a soft fine, it's just a regular 14 karat fine nib, but it was just so enjoyable to write with. Now, I had heard that the E95S was known for being a, a soft writer and having a bouncy nib. I hadn't had that experience with mine, but the Custom 74 was just such a surprising and pleasant writing experience that it really stands out in my memory. And I thought when I got this pen, this is the only pen I ever want to write with ever again. I can get rid of all my other pens. I'm just going to write with the Custom 74. Well, about a week later, I got over that, and I kept my other fountain pens. But the more I used the Custom 74, it was a little bit long for me, but the enjoyable writing experience with the nib made it worthwhile. I did, however, wish it was a little bit shorter, and I'm one of those unusual people who prefers a smaller ink capacity in my pen. So I actually like the converters that come with the Caveco and the Pilot Prera. Well, I was browsing the internet and I came across a Pilot Stargazer. Pilot had stopped making the Stargazers a few years prior to this, so I thought that I had missed out on the opportunity to ever have one. but. When I found one for sale, I asked my husband if he would get me one of those for Christmas, and he did. So now with the Pilot Stargazer, I had the nice soft nib that I liked so much from the Custom 74. I had a small pen like my Pilot Prera, and it became one of my top three pens. Now, I can't rank my top three pens in order from first to third. I like them all equally. They each have their own place in my writing lineup, but the Caveco Sport, it reminds me of my early days in the fountain pen hobby and my time as a teacher, and it's a little fountain pen collection all on its own. 
I like the Pilot Prera because it writes such a nice, smooth, fine line. And I like my Pilot Stargazer because it has that nice, soft nib and it's a small pen that just fits my hand so well. I call these my top three pens because when I'm not using them, I want to be using them. And when I don't have them inked up, I'm dreaming about what ink I'm going to put into them next. And if I don't have anything to write, I'll make up something to write so that I have an opportunity to use these three pens. I want to thank Applebaum for giving me the opportunity to share my top three pens, and I hope you have a great day.